It's called Casper. Now I tie this, Bob Crum, who is a guide on the Bighorn, looked at me tying this fly when I was at a conclave in Montana. And he goes, that looks like half a chicken. And it was all white, right? So I, like I tie this fly, just multitude of colors. He goes, that looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost. He didn't realize he named the fly because I chose Casper as a fly, right? As a name for the fly. But once again, it's really easy to tie. So we'll just use the same hook. So I started pulling around with this fly, I guess when I was about 16. And then I really made strides when I was a little bit older and could understand everything. But as far as I know, this is the first, I wouldn't call it the first because guys are using full bodies for streamer patterns, but that fly wouldn't sink, it would float. So this fly will sink but it will only sink 18 to 24 inches. So if you're fishing over a weed bed, it depends on the size of hook you use and the thickness of wire and the size of Google eyes that you use. You can get the fly to sink six inches. You can get it down to 18 to 24 inches. The great thing is it's a suspended fly and it rattles. You will never have that with another fly ever and these things are so easy to tie it's amazing so we'll start the thread i don't care where i start this thread you notice i really don't say anything about where to start the thread or how to tie it on or it's all individualistic you do if you do the procedure you can do the procedure any way you want as long as you do the procedure right and it's not hard so we'll get some black saddle hack Now, once again, pike are not fussy, so I don't care what the feathers sound like. I put two on each side. There's one side. Look, Vaughn, no trimming. Here's the other side. Tail is done. Black cross cut. Now you're going to trim. The bottom portion to a point so you can tie it in easier and it won't fold over on itself. So you're going to tie that in. Anything hard yet? Yeah. Advance the thread. Wrap the cross cut. Form the head. Are you wondering why I'm forming such a big head? You'll see in a minute. Now, how many of these can you tie in an hour? Plenty a pile you buy a fly like this in the store you're going to be paying eight nine bucks for it how long did it take me to tie what takes the longest is putting the eyes on right 
So this is a black Casper. I do it in white. I'll do it in pink. I'll do it in, you can get the tiger stripes that you can do flies in. So it's yellow, orange, and black, which is really cool. You can do it in any color combination you want. Experiment, have fun with it. That's a whole thing of, of fly time. Like, like I said before, people get tied into doing patterns. Don't get tied into that, please. Some of the best flies I ever used were tied by friends of mine who actually had substituted materials on a fly that they didn't have the materials for. And it's just amazing how they work. Now you notice a big goop of, or a big dollop of goop. And you'll see why I need this much in a minute. Okay. So we're just gonna smooth that out, round it out. Stick that back in there, just for a second. Now, this is why I like the black. So I use pink eyes on it. These are goog dull Google eyes. And boy, do they work. Now, the reason this is a suspending fly, is because these are like little air bubbles. They're vacuum packed. So there's air trapped inside. That's why this fly won't sink. So, and take another dollop, put it on the back of the eye. And press that down. Now remember, take some off the top, put it right over the eye. Take some off the bottom. Another little dollop of uh, goop. Put it on the back of the other eye and do the same thing. Now, putting the eyes on, that takes the longest. Tying these flies doesn't take any time at all. So there is a Casper that is going to be suspended and it rattles because once it sets, you can come up and shake it and you can hear the rattles, no problem whatsoever. <laughs> 